Hey everybody, welcome back to the Petapixel Podcast. Another week, more of our faces. And here today, struggling with his monitor like crazy, it's Chris Nichols. Say hi, Chris. Hey everybody, how's it going? And who's that over there? Oh, with a little bit of purpley blue? That's my buddy, Jaron Schneider. How's it going, Jaron? Uh, this is X for uh, red, not for the his social media favorite network. In social media. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and not only his favorite overall human. enterprise, yes, yeah, by yeah, far. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but also, we've got returning champion, one of our only, yes. our second two-timer. It's Gordon Lang from Camera Labs, from Dino Bites, industry legend, beloved figure in our community. How's it going, Universally Gordon? loved. Hey, it couldn't Universally be going loved. better after that introduction. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't know. It seemed like just a a minute ago we were having some technical hiccups, but uh, (laughs) now everything's good. We're talking. We're rolling. I don't know if Jordan had a question, but I think I might not let him this week because this podcast is too full of stuff. I'm worried we're going to run out of time. You can save it for next week. I'm banking it then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We just have a lot to go over. Not only was there a bunch of news this week that we should talk about, but we are going to do our mid-year performance for every camera and lens maker. Uh, we're going to give them all grades. Think of this as a midterm to see how they're doing in 2024. Uh, and that's why we brought in Gordon, because Gordon's knowledge is very much necessary for this. So yeah. we're going to do that. Let's just get right into it. All right, as usual, uh, our podcast is brought to you by OM System, and we thank them very much for sponsoring this episode. OM System is renowned for their extensive lineup of lenses, offering a wide variety of compact, lightweight options. That's what I love about them. Advanced optical performance is always a hallmark. From compact primes to versatile zooms, extreme telephotos, specialized macro lenses, big ultra zooms, the range caters to photographers of all skill levels and all genres. Now, the M's Wico Pro Series is their nicest series. It's designed to meet the rigorous demands of professional photographers and their shooting environments, featuring very rugged build quality. I can attest to that. Excellent ceiling against the weather, superior optical performance. OM system continue to lead with the introduction of innovations such as image stabilization with Sync IS, high-speed autofocusing systems, and even built-in teleconverters, ensuring exceptional image quality at any focal length. M's Wico lenses have earned a reputation for their excellent optical quality, portability, and versatility making them a popular choice among photographers who demand the best. So whether you're a seasoned photographer or just starting out, don't miss OM System's best lens deals of the season. Again, only available until July 21st. We tell you these sales, you know, you got to pay attention because they go quick. You don't want to miss them. So upgrade your kit, expand your collection with big savings up to $400. Visit your nearest OM System authorized retailer or explore omsystem.com slash petapixel to take advantage of the big savings today. That is a or uh, tomorrow, slight or the typo. day after, it's, but not it, past July twenty first. <laughs> it's explore.omsystem.com slash petapixel. It's like Ron Burgundy oh. over here. If it's not on, he's gonna read exactly what oh. the prompter says. <laughs> yes. Explore <laughs> Santiago. Explore. Explore.omsystem.com slash petapixel. That's right. Uh, Killed okay. it at the end. Uh, let's let's get straight into this. Uh, we're gonna cover a few news stories that broke this week. Uh, Meta, the owner of Facebook Instagram has changed the made with AI distinction that they were putting on anything that they sensed any AI on to AI info, which now appears in the same spot, but you can click on it to see what that means. Problem Uh, solved. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, I put it to our audience on threads on whether or not this uh, solves any perceived issues. Uh, 63% said no, and 37% said yes. And one of the things that I saw that made the most sense to me was a reply that says from Parkstone Photography. Now it looks even more confusing than before when viewed as a layman. How is Joe Bloggs supposed to know what AI and what isn't AI? How are they supposed to know the difference and what prompts are compared to actual editing? What started out <laughs> as possibly a good intention now just looks weird and unexplainable. Yeah, that's uh, it's funny because they were they were trying to do this to be more 
open, transparent, accurate, which in some ways is true. Like you got to look at it from from both viewpoints. I mean, a lot of photographers and creators, for example, they see made with AI and they're like, oh, well, that's kind of giving the wrong impression. I mean, yes, technically, but it implies that the photograph was pure AI as opposed to I just did some generative fill in the corner, you know, to, to right. correct this annoying branch that was sticking out of here. And uh, and at the same time, it's like there there is the argument that, Yes, I could go in. I mean, this is an example. I did take out an annoying branch in the corner. It's like, yeah, I could have clone stamped it. Then that's not AI. But Generative Phil did it so much faster. It did a good job. Like, why not? You know, and it's not like I'm trying to be disingenuous or or do something that I couldn't do myself with more time. It's just, yeah. And it says made with AI. Info, uh, made with AI. The implication is now you think the whole photograph is in some way AI. And and it's very important that we get this right because. As, the, as this person points out, you know, Joe Blog, there are a lot of people who don't understand the ins and outs of it. Um, so I could see as a creator, this is nice, but then it feels kind of in a way to be less genuine to say just AI info. I mean, it's Maybe you should accurate. just say one fifth of this photo is generated by AI. That would make it Like a percentage. Clearer. They yeah, don't know percentage. this though, because Meta is not doing anything not special. Yes. They're just looking at the metadata that is embedded by the companies. They're claiming they're, it's industry standard tags, which is kind of true, but like not every everyone is using these tags. Uh, I think Stable Diffusion is the one that you can generate an image entirely just full AI, upload it to Instagram, and Instagram's just like thumbs up because they're not putting <laughs> that data in there. And you can take anything of the any one of these things and strip the metadata and thumbs up, not right, not not made with AI. So the fact of the matter is, is that Meta is using a just this broad brushstroke to try and yeah. do this, and all it's doing is hurting people who are mostly, mostly photography, where it's like ninety nine percent plus is photography, and it makes it look like it's not. Yeah. So most people, this group agree, this is still not, not good enough. I'm I'm going to vote on the uh, not good enough side of this. Yes. So what would what would be an appropriate? Just use the content, uh, the C AI, uh, so you can actually see like, oh, this is the process that this image went through. You know, uh, if they actually joined that, they could say like, oh, and generative fill was used to remove this tree branch. Otherwise, this is a genuine image Correct. created by. Yes, that's the okay, use how the actual system that the C AI has created. Right. That allows but you. But how to would you show it. that on a social media platform in a I'm way? Glad you asked. Be- oh, yeah, Gordon. I've got a solution. What you do is when you create any post, when you create any content at all, a picture for any kind of sharing, your computer automatically starts recording the actual process that you've taken and then uploads it as a separate tutorial from which you could monetize (laughs) that and generate even more content. Right. That's that- very similar to what the actual answer is, which oh. is uh, if if Meta were to join the CAI, there is a little icon that they have created that would be embedded on every image. Every image would have this across the board. And if you were yes. to click that, it would pop up and show everything that happened with that image to get to that point. That's that's the well, you goal. mean like a colored like a kind of crosshatch or something. Well, it's so it pulls watermark. it up, and it's essentially a timeline. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little oh. watermark in the corner, and it pulls up another yeah. window that shows every edit that applied to that photo to get to that point. But then you could argue that that's largely going to be ignored as a watermark, right? Like you're sure. asking then viewers is that, to be savvy. Is that worse than essentially misrepresenting what happened? Which is what the, the real answer is a time machine. We need a time machine. And destroy oh. AI before it starts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we need to go find Skynet and we need to just wipe it out. Yeah. Yeah, all right. um, yeah we need time machines. Because uh, every AI challenge always then ends up the cure is time machine. So. <laughs> well, uh, well, that's and that okay. sorted. We need time machines and guns and we need <laughs> thumbs ups in lava. Anyways, let's keep going. Yeah, definitely. Speaking of time machines and I guess time, uh, last year the Google Pixel Eight launched in what was it October? I think we were we were yes, all we together were in, in Idaho. Idaho when that happened. Um, well, Google appears to be pushing to do that sooner this year. They are having an event in August uh, in a teaser video. It is titled "AI Meet Nine at Made by Google," and the nine is in IX Roman numerals. So that seems to imply Pixel 9 and Big Pixel launch. 9 Pro. And that would put it several months ahead, ahead of everyone. everyone. Yeah. So major shift here. Uh, we are going to go 
And mm-hmm. I hope that it's I hope it's a Pixel 9. Because <laughs> if it's I'm not, I don't know what we're doing. I think it's great because if if these companies, smartphone companies, were anything like the camera companies, they would launch everything on the exact same day. Yeah, right. like yeah. San Jose. A random seventeenth <laughs> is when yeah. everything drops. San yeah. Jose would be a mess. You'd have to pick like where am I going? The Apple event, the Samsung event, the Google event. Like you know, you can't do all three. It would just be a nightmare. And uh, yeah, I for one approve of spreading out all major yeah. releases. Space it out, uh, yeah. especially smartphones where it actually takes a lot of time. Smartphones are the most demanding in terms of like you have to take a pile of pictures because you can't really yeah. control it too much. So you just have to shoot it in a huge variety of situations and see what happens. And if the so, viewers, you know, I to give pro. contest for the viewers and Gordon, you'll, you'll know this as well, like, you know, better than anyone else is like they all the camera companies now seem to get together and launch products on the exact same day. And then, yeah, what is like, that about? Right. From different company. And then the viewers Spite. are like, well, I got four videos, like, you know, notifications coming up. And, I and there's no up. reason to do these. Like no, why yeah, it's not like it's a photo Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The why Pentax and the Nikon one, t- the, the Z63 and the, uh, the Pentax 17 coming out on the same day felt completely unnecessary. And yet. yeah. And at least Pentax, you know, 17 is their name. Like, so that's like, that's why we chose to do that. But I don't know. There's there's a secret cabal, and they all get together and they agree, and it's purely to mentally erode the viewers' sanity over a period of time. I think more. I the mean, there should be some sort of shared viewers. calendar, shouldn't there? Some sort of shared calendar that they can all use that says, right. you know, I'm not saying what it is, but maybe I'm doing something on this day, like a restaurant reservation. It. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, uh, Nikon's already taken that table for tonight. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, can we interest you in like Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Right? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to point out to the listeners that uh, the wonderful sounds of the sea that you're hearing is not a sound effect that we're adding. That is because Gordon is is next to the ocean and, and it sounds lovely. And I wish I were also next to the ocean. <laughs> it's because I'm being sponsored by some sound effect library. And the only way to pay it. is if I could, you know, just constantly just have play it playing seagulls. in the background. For the best white noise, come to <laughs> Gordon's ocean sound. I, I haven't heard seagulls while talking to you uh, on camera before. So I don't know. Really? Yeah. They yeah. they are there if you listen in the background in most of my videos. I mean, I know that my content is so compelling, it's hard to yes. not concentrate yeah. on what I'm saying, exactly. but the seagulls are ever present. <laughs> right. Mm. Does it smell uh, like salt in the air? Is it like... Not quite. Not quite. It smells of like seagull poo quite a lot. <laughs> oh, it's not nearly as glamorous. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna transition to uh, the Leica Deluxe 8 <gasps> is now shipping. Yeah. It was announced today. Jordan has one in his hands. Uh, that is, uh, uh, I would like to point out, a rarity because it launched and immediately sold out. So you cannot buy this if you want to. Uh, the Leica store is accepting. You can put your name in to be notified when it's available. Uh, B&H still shows the Q. What's the most recent Q? Q3. Jordan? That is still listed as pre-order on, on B&H. So if you see pre-order on B&H for the Deluxe 8, it's because they don't have them in stock. So this is but technically you're pre-ordering it. Yeah, that's yeah. typical for Leica, though. I mean, that's yeah. that's. I'd be worried if Leica was like, oh, we got lots. If you want one, come down and get it. I'd be like, this company. That <laughs> yeah, this is, this is, they do not make a lot of products. But yeah. I do want to point out, and maybe I can get, uh, uh, get uh, Gordon's thoughts on this. Not Jordan, Gordon. Gordon, Well, yeah. I wanted your thoughts on it because Jordan, I've, not, Jordan, I've not seen it properly. Is it not based on the previous oh. camera oh, substantially? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 What oh, exactly is seven. new? Okay, so they've changed the buttons on the back. So it's oh, the same interface go. as like <laughs> the modern M's, right? Uh, mm-hmm. So it's just the little buttons over there. Um, new processor, and that's what I'm very curious about. Is is that going to impact like the buffer on it? Is it going to impact? There was a heavy crop when you recorded 4K with the older model. So mm. let's see if that's been enhanced. Be but like it's the same lens. It's the same basic body yeah. design on you it. You know, and that's, the lens is chopping into the Micro Four Thirds sensor a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you don't get the full coverage of the sensor. No, it's cropping down to 17 Mm. megapixels. I want to, Gordon, I want to ask you, what do you think about this whole craze lately of compact point and shoot or fixed lens cameras that just seem to be uber popular? Because everything's sold out. You can't buy one. You, yeah. From any manufacturer, you cannot purchase a compact camera from them right now. Yes. And I would say, it is beginning to look, I mean, it's start, I mean, you could trace, trace it back most recently to 
the kind of popularity of the X100V when it kind of got ticked up a bit afterwards. Yep. But then surely that doesn't explain why the X106 right. sold out so quickly. And it's like, it was unprecedented demand. It's like, it's not, it's precedented, not unprecedented because you had the demand before. You're going to have the same demand again. You know, I mean, I know they don't want to make too many of them, but and I know they want to keep people hungry, but it does seem that, I don't know, I, I'm beginning to think that it is a bit deliberate. Yeah. What do you think? I, they did say they're doubling production um, going over to it. So it's not like they're keeping the exact same. It's just they mm. were also dealing with, you know, I, I know at like a local camera store, hundreds of people waiting for X100 fives when the mm. six was launched. Uh, so all that demand is getting rolled forward as well. Um, so, yeah, it, it, they should have anticipated this a little more. And I know they moved production to China and everything like that. It's it's a complicated camera. It might take some time to put together because you got that hybrid viewfinder on it. X Pro series have always been short. Um, that's always been a difficult camera to get on. And it's the same kind of mechanical side to things. So I do think that's the issue. But you know so what could other- also solve this problem? It's not, say, just Fujifilm making more X100s, but all the companies bringing back yeah. compacts because obviously they're popular and people want them. Right. And most camera companies have got lovely heritage to look back on. I mean, you look at those old Canon, Canonet cameras, you know, yeah. things like that. They look, I was, I was recently in a, in a camera shop with loads of vintage cameras, film cameras from all the brands. And they all look like Fujifilm X 100s and every single one of them, you'd look at it and you'd go, Whoa, that looks lovely. I'd, I'd love to have one of those. Oh yeah. no, I want one of those. No, I want one of those. You, they, they just all look so nice. And they have that heritage. They have the designs already made. They just need to pop a new sensor in there and wait for the money to roll in. Surely it's that simple, isn't it? I've called my shot that I think in like, I've said, in a few years, we're going to have a pile of unwanted compact fixed lens cameras because they see the demand now and it's going to take a while to actually make these things. Okay, but yeah, the X100- how long does it actually take? I mean, I know if, let's say, Sony has a bright idea today, how soon do we actually see that on the market? Is it a year? Is it six months? Is it two years? Is they it have to spin years? manufacturing back up. It's probably between two and three. Yeah. I don't know. I think some of these feet, I think some, some of it could be a bit more responsive than we're led to believe. I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe they're just I'm not, not sure. sold on it. Chris, what were you trying to say? No, I'm times? good. No. No, no. <laughs> See, no. now you know what oh, Jordan. Man. You got like. Jordan tarred there. That's crazy. Jordan gets to talk all the time. I don't. Uh, that's a silly, perpetuated myth. He does not. Get cut off. It's ridiculous. Uh, all right. So the last story of the week we're going to talk about is uh, OM System kind of shadow dropped a new camera uh, today as we're recording this, uh, and by new I mean uh, slightly altered. Uh, it is an EM1 Mark III Astro, and if you look at it, you'll notice that the camera still says Olympus on it which leads me to believe these were older EM1 Mark III stock that they had that they needed to try and, and make a, appealing. And what they Tear did the is they, they put an IR cut filter that allows 100% transmittance of the H-alpha radiation, allowing for the capture of a vivid red celestial images. This, combined with OM Systems' computational photography, like the in-camera uh, multi-shot, and Starry AF, Starry Sky AF, my one of my favorite things to say. It's Starry Sky AF. Uh, that can result in the ability to capture some really neat astro shots. So putting the uh, IR cut. They also added a couple other things. They have these two new filters that go in between the lens and the sensor. That one is a light pollution filter and one is like a slight soft filter that makes stars look brighter and like kind of spread out a little bit more. So hmm. you can get different looks to your shots. Um, this camera was announced uh, today. It will launch in Japan uh, later this month for 327,800 yen. That's about $2,000. And that includes the two body filters. Uh, OM System tells us that they are going to introduce it later this year in Australia, but there are currently no plans to release it in North America. Hmm. Hmm. Do you think this is a good use of uh, older cameras? I actually think this is super cool. Like sure, I mean, stock. but we've seen it. We've seen it before, right? I mean, yeah. other companies have done D810A? This their old SLRs. Yeah, yeah, D810As and stuff. I mean, yeah, Canon it did a few, twenty twenty DA as well, wasn't it? Or twenty D yeah. uh, something. Yeah. Oh gosh, I forgot yeah. about Canon that did one. it. Yeah, Nikon yeah, there did was it. an uh, EOS uh, the six D. I know had variations for Astro as well. Yeah, it's it's not unheard of. I do like the 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 multi shot 
in-camera compilation for shooting stars is neat. They actually adjusted the algorithm slightly. So you're going to use the handheld mode, but on a tripod or on an equatorial mount. And it hmm. uses the more data to reduce noise and increase resolution at the same time. So. It would have to compensate for rotation too, right? Yeah. So it's, I mean, there that's one of their strengths is being able to do the computational photography and starry sky AF uh, does work. <laughs> very well it, it actually is a, an accurate way to get focus without messing around so yeah it makes sense I, I it's funny i don't know if we've seen astrophotography micro four thirds cameras before maybe it's been done before but i don't recall i, I can't recall it i mean and it makes a lot of sense this particular model as well because there's a lot of advantages to the newer stacked sensors but shooting low light is not one of them actually they're yeah. very slightly worse uh so here you've got essentially like their best image maker for astrophotography now with the filters and yeah if it works with the handheld high res to uh, line those shots back up again then you know just keep on stacking you can always get better and better image quality but then why such small distribution right i mean it makes you wonder is it just they had a few bodies you know i say few but like a few thousand bodies or a few hundred bodies sitting around that they wanted to repurpose or are they just worried that it's not really going to be that popular or you know they wanted to do a small test i think it's the first market. thing I think it's a mix, probably. Is it a branding thing that they're not allowed to use that name in other markets? Oh, could be. That's oh, that's good. possible. That's a good point. That's, that's why you're here, Gordon. But the thing is, it's not. It's like if they were existing stock, but technically, I guess it's a new, a new, new like product number when they mm -hmm. change it to this. So you, you might stick be right a piece there. of tape over Olympus, though, and yeah. or you scratch out like just the uh, the other letters. Fill it in with yeah, black the L paint. is gone. Yeah, it's just yeah, and then a couple spaces, and then there's M, no system you know. on it. Maybe there's <laughs> one know. S. But. Yeah. <laughs> so this one I wanted to bring up. Uh, there was another we didn't have. It's not going to be a full discussion point, but there is another camera that got uh, kind of announced. I'm putting air quotes up today. Panasonic had a has a new Lumix FZ80D. Mm -hmm. It's a 60 times super zoom, and it's only going to cost. Uh, Four hundred and eighty dollars. So it's another. It's a re-release of a uh, one of their previous compact cameras. Uh, they updated a few small things, like you know, changing the USB or whatever. But I, th I, I think wanted, that's why they have to. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to mention these two cameras quickly because they do tie into what we're doing today, and that is the these guys got the their their papers submitted right at the deadline because we are going to do the their midterm <laughs> reviews right now. I don't so. think it's going to influence their grades dramatically. <laughs> I don't know. You can't say that that uh, OM didn't release a camera because they did. So uh, on that note, before we get to that, I do want to mention to anyone listening, uh, if I have to answer the phone or if you hear anything, it's because I have people that are expected to call me to deal with some yard waste and there's a plumber upstairs. So if I disappear for a second and I, you see me on the phone, that's why. But it shouldn't be uh, for an extended period. And hopefully these three can cover for me while I'm uh, dealing we'll continue with And if you see a seagull like come in. Uh, yes. I just need to go. <laughs> yeah, I've got to deal with that. Because <laughs> that's where that smell comes from. It gets exactly in the house right. and everything. Yeah. Uh, okay, so here we go. We're going to talk about the mid-year performance for every camera and lens maker. Well, every major one. But before we get to that, I'd like to uh, to thank our main story sponsor, Bay Photo. Professional quality prints are the perfect way to elevate your photography. And if you have your own photo business, it's a great way to boost sales. With Bay Photo as your partner lab, you can easily order and quickly deliver stunning photo products to your clients. This is important, guys. You can save 25% off any one wall display order with promo code Petapixel25. Just I want that to be clear before I move on to read the rest of this. Just 25% off an order with Petapixel25. You should take advantage of that copy. because now I'm going to read the rest of the copy. Bay Photo uses top quality and sustainable materials and quick turnaround and white label shipping to allow customers to deliver directly to clients with assurance. They even offer optional color correction performed by their professionally trained technicians to ensure the best results from your images. Bay Photo also offers the most reliable customer service available, which they know is important to you as your partner in photography. Bay Photo's intuitive online ordering platform was custom developed for photographers, including tools to help you sell your prints. One of these features allows you to generate custom wall previews to see and share what your prints will look like before ordering. Innovation has upheld Bay Photo's success through the transition from film to digital, and today they have the largest selection of products and display options and are known for their customization. Again, Petapixel viewers and listeners can save 25% off any one wall display order with promo code Petapixel25. This includes metal prints, acrylic prints, frame prints, 
epic prints, canvas wraps, and more. Go to bayphoto.com slash petapixel to create your next high-impact display today. Seriously, 25% off is not not nothing. Yeah. If you've been wanting to get something printed, there you go. 25% what I will off. Say, what I will say, too, is when we do these ads, you always get comments then below, and people are like, oh, I've used that service. I don't love it. And then people are like, oh, I do like it. But actually, all the comments on Bay Photo, everybody's like, it's great. Yeah, the they photo's been fantastic. fantastic for years. I loved it. I loved it. It was nice to work with them. So that's, you know, you get that sort of democratic process of, of people who've actually used it. People seem to really like Bay Photo. I had a friend who worked at Bay Photo who previously worked with me at PhotoFlex back way back when. And he went to Bay Photo after that and always had good things to say about even working at Bay Photo. So well, there you go. Not there even not go. only their products great. People are great. <laughs> OK, here we go. We're going to do these in alphabetical order. So that way there you can be we can't be told that we're favoring one or the other. So we're, uh, the, the brands we're going to cover today, everyone, are Canon, Fujifilm, Leica, Nikon, OM System, Panasonic, Ricoh Pentax, Sigma, Sony, and Tamron. And the way this works is we're going to go around the room here and we're going to grade each of these camera companies on their performance halfway through 2024. We're going to come back at the end of the year and do a full year review. So they these people have a chance people companies have a chance to raise their grades Redemption. by the end of the year but they need to know where they stand right now in july and we're gonna go in this order it's gonna go gordon jordan chris and then if i have anything to add i'll go but gordon gets to go first so with that said let's start with the big c canon <laughs> i don't know if like, that's the nickname they want <laughs> you don't like that i like the big c jordan loves the c word gordon you actually uh you work with canon quite a bit yeah. Uh, so you, you, this is a good one for you to start with. Let, let yeah. us know. Go over what they've done and what you think they deserve. Okay. So it's been quite quiet so far. The first half uh, for Canon, they um, they nipped in recently to say, "Hey, the SR1 is official." Which is funny when they do that because you see so many rumors that you, and just like an assumption of what's happened, what's come before, and what's inevitably going to come, that you knew. You, you already thought it was official, but they actually made it official. So that's their kind of big camera body news. But beyond that, we don't yet know anything about that or any other bodies that we're expecting. So first half, pretty quiet on the body front. Um, Lens-wise, also fairly quiet. They did a couple of dual fisheye VR lenses, which are interesting, if yeah. uh, nothing else. I haven't seen them yet, though, in the market. They just announced yeah. that they're coming. Yeah, I mean, the kind of what was a bit of a surprise is I was briefed on one of them, and then the one which was announced with Apple was a complete surprise to the yeah. people who briefed yeah. me about the the other one. So it's like there's obviously different departments doing different things. I think probably the, for me the most interesting product they've done so far is the 35 millimeter f 1.4 L. Everyone knew obviously there would be an RF 35 1.4 L or 1.2 L. What was interesting is that they've made it part of their hybrid series, but I still remain a little bit confused by this series because they've only had one lens so far in it. That mm -hmm. was the 24-105 2.8 Z or Z. And that Z was initially, I was initially told that indicated it was a hybrid lens, not a Nikon lens. Uh, but now I'm told <laughs> it's for Zoom. So this one is also a hybrid lens, but it's a prime, but it doesn't have a P or a Z or a Z. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on. It does have an aperture ring, but it only works in video and not in photos. For cameras um, released prior to July 2024. True, which implies that there will be some future ones that it does work on, which is great. But why doesn't it work on all of could them? Could you imagine the complexity of that firmware, Gordon? It's, None it's of us insane. could wrap our heads around it. <laughs> we so. just can't understand it. It's just a bit, I don't know. I mean, I love I love aperture rings. It's interesting when you look back at, say, some of Sony's older lenses. They didn't have them, and now they do have them. And Sigma's putting them on some of their lenses, not their cheaper ones necessarily. But, you know, I think the market likes aperture rings. They look cool. Um, you don't have to use them. But you can use them. And they should all be clickable and declickable. That's the, we shouldn't be having this discussion. So it's a bit weird that it doesn't click. It's only smooth. It's only for video. And it only works in video. You can't use it for photos. It's, it's a weird thing. I, I just don't really know what to say. So based on the weirdness of that lens and the <laughs> fact that we haven't had much else from them in the first half, I would say that there is room for improvement. I'm going to give them a, a C so far. But I reckon in the second half, that's going to go up somewhat. All right. Before, who did I say was going second? Jordan? Me. 
Yeah. Uh, Jordan before gets to before go. that, I do want to mention there are two other technically cameras that they did announce. Uh, the Canon PowerShot Golf yep. is a laser rangefinder with photo capabilities. And B plus. The, <laughs> the <laughs> that RF changes mount, everything. The C400 was technically okay. also announced. Yeah, but true. that's not really a photo camera, so that's fine that that one was mentioned. But I, I cannot, I'm aghast you forgot about the Golf. Yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave now. Join I'm the Seagulls. glad you interjected because, Jaron, there was no way I was going to forget about the golf. That's on my list right here. <laughs> I mean, so no, ahead, I, Jordan. So I, I think it's really interesting. Basically, every single thing we've mentioned is video centric. I feel like Canon really, they had that market in a big way for a while. And now they're definitely trying to like get it back a little bit, especially now that they got more competition from Nikon. Uh, so getting that C400 is out. But yeah, all very video centric. And also that 24105 2.8 lens actually started shipping this year as well. It was one of those like announce that it doesn't come out for a little while. So it's all video. So I should be giving them gold stars, but I'm going to go uh, C minus at this point because uh, yeah, just nothing super compelling and some of the weirdness in those lenses there. Uh, everything is for a very small audience and it's not going to gain them a ton of market share. Chris? Chris? What's left? Um, <laughs> you can just grade them. Yeah, Divide I mean... Your opinion I, and grade. I would, I would give Canon a C- as well, and, and that's tough. And I think it's... You know, if I was going to add anything else, you can't help but feel like Canon as a company, especially the last couple of years, have had this stigma. And stigmas are important in this industry. They really do kind of change how people perceive the companies, how how influencers and, and, and reviewers look at things. I mean, it's all true. And so the stigma with Canon, I think, lately is they've really kind of been behind on sensor tech and they haven't really adapted too far into that regard. And they've they've been quite slow in their production period. Like we're not seeing a lot of new products and uh, they've been resting on old cameras now for a long time. Uh, it, whether it's the cinema market or or like cameras like the R5, I, you know, and then the R3, to be honest, was kind of a non-starter. It was such a specialized tool. So you've got this company where they don't really have a big flagship. And yeah, maybe I mean, the R1, let's hope that it really changes that. But the stigma really is that Canon's been falling behind. And I'm sure they even feel that and know that. So that's tough. That's a tough place to be. And uh, yeah, C minus. Uh, even though... There's one other thing I should mention about Canon this this period. They did open their mount to APS-C third party. So yeah. we will be seeing Tamron and Sigma. We already are seeing Sigma. And Sigma released a note that the, the one lens that is now announced and available is going to likely be in short supply in some regions because uh, people want it. That yeah. shows that Canon sold a lot of those APS-C cameras early on. But haven't I agree with you, Chris. They haven't done much. I'm not willing to say that opening your mount gets you more points. And I've been, I'm going to say yeah. that they've, they haven't really had any momentum even going yeah. back last year. And so because of that, I'm going to go D plus I, as, as a Canon guy, I'm <clears throat> going to be even harder on them because I want so them to, to, to do more. I want, I want to be, I want to be like a proud Canon guy again. And they're making yeah. it really not easy to do. I, I, when someone recently asked me like what they were going to bring to Safari, I didn't recommend a single Canon camera. I just I just figured it wasn't there. There are better options for someone starting from complete scratch. So when I'm at that point as a guy who owns Canon equipment, um, that's not great. So. Yeah. And opening up the mount is great. Like, you know, there's nothing wrong there. But let's be yeah. honest, that's that's really uh, a win win because they, they don't support their APS-C line that well. It's like I mean, putting wheels really on a does. bike, though, isn't it? It should be mandatory. It shouldn't be. An option. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, hey, guys, look, we can steer our car now. <laughs> well, it's like, but this is like they, they have a bike, they have a bike and they gave you one wheel, but they didn't give you the other wheel, right? So it's like, look, you, if you can pull wheelies all day on APS-C, go for it. But but, but then they're saying like, uh, so can I get a second wheel? They're like, unfortunately, we don't make a second wheel. Well, does anyone else make a second wheel? No, well, no they might, but we're not going to allow them to mount our bike. <laughs> and I think yeah. Canon's actually really cagey about opening up their full frame lens lineup to third party. I think yeah, they still... got the press that it opened up, but not for the majority of Canon shooters I don't, I don't who don't think own APS-C. I don't think we're going to see that anytime soon. I don't think we're going to see it either. I mean, you know, you look at the APS-Cs because they've never really cared for APS-C lenses. Yeah. You look at EFS, EFM, they don't really care. 
they've never had a high end one. They've they've only just released a sort of handful of ones, and it's always been don't. But you can mount any of the full frame lenses on it. It's okay. Yeah, you can put them on. The it's like I don't want to do that. Yeah. And that might be fine having those cheap lenses for the lower end bodies. But they do sell bodies like the seven D or like the R seven. These are high end bodies crying out for decent dedicated yeah. APS-C lenses and now thankfully Sigma can do it but I would not hold your breath for full frame one uh, no. third party lenses for that system no alrighty alright let's move on to Fujifilm Gordon am I starting you're starting I'd say again. a very so I, I made a list of all the products that I've reviewed from each of the manufacturers so there's a few gaps because I don't do some of the brands but for Fujifilm there's a lot more than I thought, actually. So mm. we've got the X106, which is obviously a you know tremendously successful camera for them. And as someone who shoots with the X100V, I'm very fond of it already. Uh, GFX100 um, S2, the mm. XT50, which got a lot of hate for its film sim dial. I quite liked it. The nice thing about Fujifilm is there's so many bodies out there. You don't like that one? Get that one. You know, most mm-hmm. of the complaints that I got on my review of the XT50, it's like, what you're describing you want is an X-T5. So go buy that. And But yeah. I want it to be a little bit smaller. The X-T5 already is small. It's, you know, it's fine. There's, they've got so many different options. I think they've got their rate. I'm, I'm happy with them doing the film sim dial. That's fine. Instax had quite a strong time. Now, most recently, Instax wide 400. Very simple camera. We've waited, they made us wait 10 years for a camera that's even more basic than the last one, which is <laughs> not exactly progress. But I think it actually hints at a uh, possible strategy going forward that a more advanced model is coming. So they wanted to do basically the Mini 12 version in wide. Let's hope that's the case. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, we had the Mini 99, which is my favorite Mini so far. Very cool in that it's always been the case that you can either have an analog camera that has no effects because it's analog, right? Or a digital one that has effects, but it's digital. And who wants that when you've got a nice analog instant camera? Well, with a Mini 99, you can have both. It's got little LEDs that light up inside, deliberately expose the film and give you light. I think it's brilliant. I love it. I want to see a Mini 99 in square and wide versions. So I would say super strong. And that's just in six months. Super mm-hmm. strong start for future. I'm giving them an, an A. Uh, I think they're incredibly solid for bodies. Um, I think they've been really kind of crushing that. There's really not a gap in their lineup unless, you know, the X Pro 4 is obviously kind of yeah, like the final that's thing. That's the gap. Um, but, I mean, that was always, you know, not a huge camera body and one that there were always supply shortages. So maybe they're making the ones that they can sell a lot more of, medium format. They finally have, like, the S is so well-rounded. Um, the big thing is I would like to see more glass for, out of them, especially on the APS-C side. Now they're putting this 40 megapixel um, sensor in pretty much everything. Uh, so I'd like to see, they were doing kind of a run of, Hey, we're updating a bunch of our primes and things to resolve a little better. I'd like to see that continued. Uh, you know, we did see the new kit lens, which is definitely that, but I believe that's the only APS-C lens we've seen this year. So, uh, because of that, I am going to give them a B plus, but I love what Fuji's been doing this year. I'm going to give B plus as well. I think they're going to just keep updating. What is the lenses, happening? So, yeah. I, I think that's going to be the exact same. Um, you know, my perspective on Fujifilm, I get why people love them. And yet, personally, I'm not like a huge fan. Like, I, it wouldn't necessarily be my go-to. You know how I feel about the X100. They're fine. Not my cup of tea. Um, but, you know, and their bodies are great. Again, not my cup of tea. But as a company, they're in such an enviable position. I mean, you've got probably the best-selling camera that of, of, of at least recent history and certainly one of the best-selling series with the X100. They've dominated the medium format market. I mean, they really are the the go to choice for anybody who wants versatility without paying some sort of prestigious price. And uh, and everybody like their fan base is incredibly loyal, incredibly zealous. So I mean, who wouldn't want to be in that position, right? Um, they have work to do. Their autofocus performance needs to keep getting better, but it is getting better. But it needs to get better. Um, but look, it's uh, you. You can't say anything bad about them, and I. Th- I feel like you know, we, people even talked like, "Oh, are are they going to take the full frame market?" I don't think they should, or why no, would they? Right? They don't I really mean, need to. They don't need to. I mean, they've they've got the medium format. They've got an APS-C line that's very well loved. Lots of lens support for it. Um, you know, they, they're one of these companies too. They're like third party. I mean, if you want to, but why, why would you, right? Like there's never really been that compelling reason to go too far into third party with them. So and there are options. Fujifilm. Yeah, you yeah there, there's options, yeah. right? But, Tamron, but, Sigma. 
Yeah, they'll yeah they're, absolutely. There absolutely is options, but you know, it's not. People are still like, but why not just get the Fujifilm glass? Yeah. So, I think they've done a great job, and uh, yeah, they're going to continue to do so. One more lens that did get announced that none of you mentioned is the 500 56 for the GF. Right. GFX, oh yes. So that, yes. Uh, right. th- that. It took Gordon probably three minutes to talk about everything they announced in six months, mm. and you yeah. still missed you still missed mm. the lenses. That's so like true. I I can't I can't give them anything less than an A minus. I do agree that their autofocus needs work, um, but I if even if this is all they announce for the rest of the year, I do not think that will be the case. I think we will see a lot more from them in the next six months. I think even if the year ended yeah. today, I'd still give them an A minus. Like they did <laughs> a very good job. One thing I did mean to mention, I've not tested this myself, but I have seen quite a few users expressing some concern over a recent firmware update, I think for the XH2 or maybe some other models where it it actually, they thought it decreased the AF performance. I've not tested that. I can't comment on whether that's the case or not. But uh, it is a, there is a it is a warning that if you are uh, thinking of updating your firmware, it is probably worth waiting for a few days to see what other people are finding. Some things may improve, some things may go back. But you know, uh, do do look into that. Is this the know? arc of Kaizen? Is it's like we're making your cameras autofocus better and better, and then they were like, we're not really doing much with firmware these days. And now they're yeah. like, our new firmware makes your cameras worse. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the company doesn't have the best track record for performance of firmware. They're the ones I think of that the most when they have to pull firmware, fix it, and re-put it back up for any of their products, like lenses, bodies. There tends to be bugs. Um, so that doesn't surprise me, Gordon. I haven't heard that, but I believe it. Um, but I'm going to retain my A-minus grade. And also, I've never managed to transfer a phone, uh, a picture to my phone using the app in anywhere other than the middle of a field. <laughs> I saw you people doing be, it in Tokyo. I know it's yeah, possible. You have to be away from any Wi-Fi network. <laughs> from iPhone, your mileage oh. may vary. All right, let's move on to Leica. Gordon. How's I have Leica's no here? comment because I don't review them, so I don't know. They look nice. Okay. Uh, so this is our, our time to get on the soapbox and say, Leica, give Gordon some stuff. Come on. Come on. Leica. They do they do they do offer. I don't know how how many people would want to see me review their stuff? I don't know. Um, I have been a little bit skeptical about some of the collaborations that they've done, which are clearly kind of rebranded Panasonic products. I'm more mm-hmm. interested in the pure Leica products where they're doing something different. And um, I, I, I kind of see, I do see the appeal, but I'd never, I never get to use them. So I can't speak. Okay. Spoiled ballot paper for me. I mean, I think they very clearly laid out exactly what their product line is going to be. And it's uh, we're in a period where we're not going to see a major new thing on the M series, which is definitely, you know, when Gordon talks about that, like unique thing, the Q, I think is still going to be a while before we see an update there. I and mean, obviously the SL3 is if you want a high res L mount camera, uh, you know, that's the best option there. Um, I believe that is 2024, correct? Correct. Gordon's eyebrows are implying it's not, but I, it I, I couldn't. Okay, great. They just do um, their own thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only hair on my head. So they, they, Rain they, them have, in, free Gordon. they have free reign to do what they wish. Uh, no, I, I do think that that was a pretty substantial update on there. Getting phase detect on a Leica is a big deal. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, and then we're probably going to see some small incremental updates like they always do. I suspect we'll start seeing like D-series um, on the M11, maybe another alternate on the uh, Q. But for what they've done this year, I'm going to give them a C. I, I liked the SL3. I don't think it's going to set L-mount on fire. But it's selling very well, so... Hmm. You know, the funny thing about Leica is I don't think there's any point in even giving them a grade because they don't give a damn. You know, it, <laughs> Chris is doing an abstain. No, no, I'm not. Like, you know, because they, they don't care. Like, they don't, they're not playing in a field. It's like they don't even show up to school, right? Because they're like, I don't need school. School's for suckers. Like, I'm doing my own thing and it's doing great, right? In they, my garage. Built, yeah. Yeah, they're the, they're the kid who drops out in grade eight and they just start their own lawn mowing business and then they turn into an empire. And now they're like, I don't I don't care. You know what I mean? Um, but, you know, with, with like uh, their process is very formulaic. I mean, their marketing, their release dates, it's all formulaic, right? They'll come up with a new version of an M camera, for example. Then they'll make all their different versions, you know, and then they'll make their artist uh, specific versions and they're you know they're limited editions and that's just their thing and it works for them and i i actually have really i've come around on leica as a company 
that I enjoy using. I actually really find now that I enjoy the photography using an M series camera. I never really did in the past. Um, the, this new Deluxe is a great example of where uh, other companies like, oh, we've made these cameras before, but they're still sitting on their hands like, oh, when are we going to release this? You know, everybody wants to buy these little compacts. Let's give it another five years. And I agree with Jordan in that it might be too late by the time other companies do it. You know, the, the trend will be over. So good for Leica to be like, well, heck, let's just re-release a camera, give it some minor updates. That's what people want. And it obviously is working well. So they just seem to beat to their own drum. And and if, you know, if I was going to give them a grade, I'd probably give them a C minus only in terms of the SL cameras. I still feel like I get it. I get the SLs. I get the Leicanography. It's cute, you know, but when Lycons. you really compare, Lycons, you know, when you really compare that against any of the other full frame cameras, it's an inferior product in so many ways. There's no, you know what I mean? I get it. If you're like a file or if that's your only choice or if you, you know, and the handling is interesting, I get it. And you can take beautiful photos on them, but let's be honest, that's the only place where they seem to compete on par with other brands and they're not doing a great job there. So, um, I would give them like a C. I'd even give them a D on the SL series. But otherwise, who cares, man? Don't graduate. You don't need to. That education is not genie to good. You're handcrafted, baby. Uh, I'm I'm having difficulty because I agree with everything you just said about the SL. But at the same time, I sort of have to give them props for what they're doing in the mobile space. Mm, uh, yes. Them acquiring Fjordan. I don't know if anyone who's listening to this knows Fjordan. Fjordan made a makes a iPhone grip with full camera controls like mode dials and shutters and whatever, and an app that goes along with it. Uh, Leica bought them. And in that time between when they bought them and when they announced the purchase, so it was like the end of last year and then like mm. three weeks ago, uh, they created like a Lux, an iPhone app that is a subscription that has like a looks for iPhone or whatever. And you take pictures of that, too. Uh, that app is not very good. Probably because it was rushed and borrows a lot from Fjordan, but it will get good. Uh, and I do like that Leica is playing more in the mobile space than pretty much anyone else yeah. in as far as camera brands go. Camera companies, yeah. Um, so I'm going to give them a C because I think that there's room for improvement, of course, but I don't want to go too low because I think they, I, I want to applaud them for what they're trying to do. There you go. Uh, Nikon, Gordon, are you going to remain with your arms crossed? Yeah, I'm abstaining from this one as well because I think I managed to confuse them when I moved to New Zealand a long time ago. So uh, the UK operation handed me over to the New Zealand operation and they supported me just fine for the six years I was there. But when I moved back 12 years ago uh, <laughs> to the UK, they still hadn't seemed to have figured out where I am or what I do. So like, I've not reviewed any of their products. Just follow the seagulls, Nikon. You'll find him. So I don't know what's going on. I mean, I like their products. I always gave them nice reviews. <laughs> what further is further confusing, though, is that um, one of my friends does review Nikon lenses. He's based in Germany, and they, they lend him the lenses. So on my camera labs, but he doesn't do videos. He only does written reviews. They're really good. If you're interested in Nikon lens reviews, check check them out on my cameralabs.com website. But you won't see any body reviews because he won't do them, and they, they, don't, they can't seem to figure out what I'm doing. I don't think it's that hard, but... Yeah. That sounds it. like so I, I can't an say, email for you. That sounds I'm like here, a Euro I'm, brand. I'm, I'm, being I'm a literally Euro I'm sat by my phone while it's connecting to my X100, right. trying to transfer some photos, and um, <laughs> in you know, the field. I'm just waiting yeah. for them to call. <laughs> You're on the English speaking island that they didn't shoot Lord of the Rings at. Maybe that'll yes. that'll work. Oh uh, well, yeah. that yeah, there's it's Australia's in there too, though. But I tell you what, That's it could continent. mean, Chris. I tell you what, it could mean if they're not talking to me, it's because they're corrupt and you lot of shills because you're not. <laughs> I knew this was coming. You know, they're that on must to be us. the answer. That, that's got to be the answer, right? You promised you wouldn't drop any truth bombs on this pod, Gordon. Well, I, I think it has to be said. You know, I'm the only one that can nicely look at these things uh, that's with, right. with an that's open, right. independent mind. So something must be going on. <laughs> Love the satire. Yeah, each each team, each each outfit had to li- deliver one firstborn. And you've got lots of kids. I don't know what your problem is. Like, come on. <laughs> uh, all right. Jordan, Nikon, go. Uh, Nikon, I'm giving Nikon an A. Uh, I do think they've had a very good run in the last little while. And the Z6 III is finally the body that we've been asking for. Like, make a camera that's 
got all of their latest, you know, the 3D tracking interface we love so much, um, but at a price point that's a little more accessible. And they really surprised me with the partially stacked sensor, which I think is very smart. Like having that middle ground between, for the longest time, it was kind of like, do you want a slow reading, you know, consumer grade sensor in, if you're looking at full frame or a very expensive um, high end um, stacked sensor camera. And I do feel like this really fills a gap that's very necessary there. The improvements come in autofocus, they come in video. It's a spectacular video camera. Um, and now that they've acquired red as well, that's only going to get better and better going forward. Um, and uh, the, I mean, it's the only reason that they're not that I could ding them is the lack of APS-C. Uh, but I just, I don't think that's their main market right now. So I'm just very optimistic moving forward. I think this is a smart move. Um, there is the ZF in there as well, which is going to cater to, you know, people who have been demanding a digital classic style Nikon full frame for going on a decade. Some of those people might be happy with it. I just think it's completely, um, you know, surpassed and outclassed by the Z6 III. But it's nice to have that option there as well. Uh, yeah. I mean, everybody would always expect to have an A. I mean, Nikon's on a huge turn right now. I'm not going to give him an A. I would give him a B plus or something like that. Um, or something like, like a B, that. like a B plus, <laughs> like, a, like a B plus or an A minus or like a B, you know, it varies. So obviously their bodies are doing fantastic as Jordan's mentioned. And it's tough to, it's tough. It's like, we keep looking at best camera of the year and we're like, Oh man, this Z6 three is pretty high up there on that list. Like, you know, again, like, what do we do? And so, and they're doing a great job that you can't take that away from them. But at the same time, if we're talking about grading standardized testing, that everybody has to do the same testing, right? Then you do have to look at the fact that, as Jordan mentioned, APSC, they've, they, like all the other companies, they're kind of like, man, we don't care. Um, you know, do your thing. We'll, we'll make some token lenses that kind of look like ZFC lenses and, but they're still full frame, so it doesn't make sense. And uh, the Z50 is not support. Like it's, it's ever they're letting it go, and that's fine. But then they have actually a very small ecosystem, right? Nikon is really then just a company that they're not doing a lot of smartphone stuff. They're not doing a, like a, a lot of other. They're really just focusing on some strong full frame bodies, and that's it. Their lens lineup is good. They've got some really nice lenses, so I, I've got to give them that. Uh, they're doing good, and their technology is definitely improving. Sensors are great. Autofocus performance is really improving. So they score high. They're super popular. They deserve that. But they still do feel like a very small kind of more. I don't know. It's like Nikon's almost becoming more niche, right? Hybrid cameras are great. Their video is strong. I think the acquisition with RAW is a really smart move. So we'll see what happens. Maybe that grade will go up in the future. I do actually was going to agree and give them an A, but I'm going to go with Chris's A minus because I, I want to give them some room to go somewhere by the end of the year, which I think they will. But uh, <laughs> since uh, I, I want to bring up everything that happened with them, they in the January, uh, I don't know that everyone knows this. They work with a brand called Unistellar and make all of their optics. So they are slightly diversified outside of tra traditional photography. So that's a telescope that came out in January. Uh, they, the Z9 went to the moon. It was picked by NASA. So like that's that was didn't go. It's going to go to the moon. Uh, they yeah. bought red. They released the 28 to 400. They released the Z6 III and they released a 35 millimeter F1.4 for 600. Oh, that's the one I forgot. Yeah, mm -hmm. a yeah. really affordable yeah. um, fast prime is really interesting coming from them. I I'll I'll reserve judgment to see if it's actually any good. Also, it's a 35. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't have the all the fancy optics in there that will make it great wide open. I don't expect it to be yeah. great wide open. What I expect it to be is affordable, and it is that. Uh, It'll be interesting to see how it compares against the 3518, because that's an S line, correct. which is yeah. one of their better ones. And this is 1.4, the cheaper one, but stop it down, maybe it could be pretty good. I think that the language they've used is expect to stop it down to get better oh. performance. So it's not going to be great. It's going to be a $600 lens. And that's perfectly fine. There's a market for a $600 lens. Anyway, I look at all of these things in six months, and it's not quite up to what Fujifilm has done with the number of things that they've released. But it's up there. It's, it's probably among the yeah. best of all of the yeah. brands we're going to look at. So I will give them an A minus. I'm really happy with Nikon. If I've said this, I said it on threads recently. If I was starting from scratch today, I would buy Nikon. Uh, oh. So I'm really, really into, uh, well, and an X106, but I don't need to invest in a system to have that <laughs> camera too. So uh, there we go. That's what I, that's what we all think. We're moving on to OM System, who sneaked in 
the last second and got a camera release <coughs> in 2024. Do we have can, anything else from them this year? Can Gordon? we you, confirm? Didn't they have a water? The didn't they do one of the OM1 TGs? OM1 Mark II. Wasn't that That was also this year. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Was there a waterproof? Uh, I will verify. I believe. I believe yeah, there, there was, is yeah. a tough. Yeah. yeah. But I TG7. don't know that it was that nope. much different. <laughs> really? Uh. Oh. Then no. Mm, yeah. <laughs> What's your grade, Gordon? Still, <laughs> yeah. It's well, we're just still the grading these companies view. based on their current products, right? Not, not necessarily. I mean, no, no, it's yeah. still what they've released this year. This, this year, don't change the rules. It's I like to, to look a, at it as how are they doing right now? It's going to have to be a D. Then I quite like astrophotography, so I'm quite pleased about that. That little bit of uh, launch action in Japan, but well, maybe yeah. if you still lived in New Zealand, they might get you one. But otherwise, yes. you're not going to see one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go a D plus uh, with them. Um, so the one thing, I, I do think it's great that we are still seeing some updates on the bodies. I think the OM1 is very important to them in that line. And Chris did notice the autofocus was significantly improved with that camera. My biggest concern is everything we've talked about just shows a lack of R&D, uh, which is becoming very concerning. Like the one lens that they brought out was a you know a rehoused sigma lens optimized for micro four thirds that om12 uh same kind of deal there it was an improvement you know they put a little bit more ram in it but nothing where i was like oh man they those people really came up with something cool and innovative tg7 same thing same thing with the astro version of the em1 mark three i want to see evidence that they're developing new technology instead of just you know making mild tweaks to what olympus was already working on yeah yeah, like, you know, I don't know what grade I would give them. It wouldn't be very high. I, I think we're, Jordan and I are agreeing on a lot of stuff. So, yeah, let's go with a D. I'd go D, D plus. Yeah, D plus. You know, it's it's like when a whale dies and then it goes to the bottom of the ocean. A whale fall. Guaranteed one metaphor every single yeah. company. <laughs> and it lands in the sand and then it creates this vibrant ecosystem right yeah. and all these like crabs and snails yeah, yeah. and worms gordon and have you heard of a whale fall and, Where, where's he going yeah that's amazing i want to see where this goes and they're yeah. like yeah and they're eating it and then you do a time lapse like amazing right but then after a while that meat disappears and the mm. animals go away and there's like a few starfish left and you just got are this, we coming like, to a skeleton. point I think, <laughs> yeah i think i, think hey, I didn't talk when you to be clear when you say starfish chris yes I mean the actual animal, not like any, okay. Well, I don't know. Anyways, All right. um, and so yeah, it's. I can't help but feel like, OM system is building off of the Olympus brand that they acquired, but they we are starting to get into this feeling where they're starting to just rehash a lot of the old stuff, re-release old products, you know, and and they're still good products, absolutely. But where is that R and D? Because you know, the tough is a rehash. The, the OM 10 is largely that way, you know, and everybody's like, Oh, are we going to see a pen? I think they could absolutely build a really cool pen camera. I think that would make sense right now, but is it just going to be the same EPL seven we've seen before with like some firmware updates? Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know if they're going to have that innovation. I think they really need to start putting in money for the R and D making new products, making novel products and moving on from the, carcass of om oh, sorry, do you think they could do anything as a kickstarter great idea sure, ev maybe. everybody wants that pen f update yeah just find out what the actual interest is there i think they'd be very surprised because uh, mm. they've said like and they're they really be. they're really doubling down on like outdoor adventure and that's not the pen f but why wouldn't you want mm. to expand your user yeah. base because panasonic's walking away from small micro four thirds bodies why couldn't pen uh, or uh, om system scoop that up because those lenses are like ready to go and fantastic i, I think did the my book best to tell yeah. them about this in japan i'm like i, I like basically held their hand like listen to me you want to make this. So I, I yeah. feel like that book behind Gordon has a lot of um, uh, this Olympus um, shots in it, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. EM10 uh, 2 or 3. Yeah. That's actually taken with my phone. <laughs> this this the cover picture of my book. The best with the phone. camera. The best uh, camera. But yeah, there's about half of this book was uh, was Olympus pictures. And that's because, yeah. you know, even back then, they would make the JPEGs with really nice hour camera. And uh, yeah, they've got, there's a lot of so many nice things about, about their system. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'd love to see some more. So maybe what they require is something like a Kickstarter or some, some external funding uh, and direction where, where the actual users who are going to buy it 
commit or say, this is what I want. I'll buy it. I'm yeah. willing to spend. I mean, let's say for each one of them, I mean, what would, what realistically is a new pen going to cost? It's going to be at least a thousand dollars, maybe yeah, 1200, 15. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere between yeah. one and one five. Right. So commit that maybe, you know, I, I don't know, or half of it or something. I don't know for a guaranteed one, but they would have to have, they'd have to come to us with an example of what that would be for them to yeah. make the money. And I'm curious what, what they think they would, they would make. Um, I had a conversation. It was either with these two or with with uh, with Jeremy, um, or one of our other editors, uh, and he brought up a good point about maybe why it feels like OM doesn't have anything new right now, and it may have been because when Olympus was ready to shut that division down, they were doing that. They acted in the process to reduce their their cost, and they started winding down. Right as okay, fine. Japan Industrial Partners comes in and says, "We'll take that." Then they need to hit the brakes mm. on that, and then back up and rewind and go back up. That mm. takes time, and this was a process that took months to do. And before that was closed, so they couldn't really hit the go button until the deal was sealed. Meaning they lost likely eight eight to months to twelve months of R and D time, and then their manufacturing also needed to be respun up and, and made sure it was maintained. So. I think we're in this period where they are in between where they needed to be. So they have all the stuff that they did while they were Olympus. We're in between now. We should see, I'm hoping by so. the end of this year, early next year, what OM does as a brand on its own. Because I agree, they need to do something. They have all the people. They have the technology. The people there are very passionate about what they do. They love their brand. Um, so I agree with both Chris and Jordan's score. Uh, but I am hopeful, and I'm, I'm like I'm not giving up on them. I mean, I, we're gonna we're gonna do some after school tutoring. We're gonna get there. This is great. <laughs> yeah. That grade's gonna come up, and I know we can do it. They just they got to diversify. Their ca their cameras are quite niche, right? Like they're good. Mm -hmm. I again, I use them, so I love them for what they do. But their video needs work absolutely. They're weak there. Um, their cameras are excellent travel cameras. They're excellent adventure cameras, but they're they're losing the market beyond that. And I think a smart move would be to go to the classic compact Definitely. beautiful camera yeah um but lean also into the strengths of micro four thirds yeah 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 and yeah. their big strength is computational technology and and that's awesome but we are largely seeing the same tools that we saw with olympus so that has to that has to get better that has to advance now it's time yeah keep right. that momentum going uh over i think we're halfway through now so let's move on to panasonic yes gordon how's panasonic doing in 2024 pretty pretty strong start i'd say not quite as many products i counted as say fujifilm but we started the year with i think that 100 millimeter l mount macro which mm -hmm. was perfectly good uh then we had um <laughs> it was perfectly good then we've got the um the s9 uh and the uh, 26 millimeter um <laughs> which i could talk about a lot or not and then the gh7 which kind of finally does everything everybody wanted from it and a bit more um but i don't know whether people were, were as excited about it uh, anymore and i i was expecting when i published my review of it i thought uh you know you, you sometimes have a thing this is not going to do that well yeah. in terms of views um not sales have no idea but in terms of views and you think that could do well that's going to do that's a dead cert that's going to do well i thought the gh7 my gh7 review was going to do better than it did and i thought mm -hmm. is it just me is it me and then i looked at everyone else's and they kind of underperformed as well from what i was expecting i don't know whether people were that ex as excited about it as i thought they'd be but it i know jordan will probably like it because it you know i mean it finally does what what you want it to do so that's solid i think the the s um the s9 is a really interesting product that was marred by the lens, by this lens, actually, the 26 millimeter F. Oh yeah, I forgot that lens is technically new too. I've actually, I've actually just finished my review of it today because I wanted to hold back on it after all the initial negative mm. hype or negativity had died down on it. And I wanted to look at it Fiery fresh rage. with fresh eyes at home, testing my normal subjects. And it's it's really interesting because I think looking behind the scenes and I, this is just my own guess this isn't information from panasonic it's just my own belief i don't think this was ever meant to be the kit lens for this camera the no. 18 to 40 zoom is the perfect kit lens for this camera and had that come out at the same time as this body 
if the lens were out in time or they delayed the launch of this until it was, I think the S9 would have had a very different reception Hmm. because there you've got a compact autofocus lens with a short zoom range. Perfect. That's what you want, right? You want a small lens to go with this. For some reason, that lens wasn't ready. For some reason, they were committed to an S9 launch at a particular date that they couldn't move for whatever reason or didn't want to move. So instead they went, well, what can we do? We've got two lenses we could do for it. This 26 appeared out of nowhere. Um, And I think it served a purpose to make it look and measure like an X100. Mm-hmm. I mean, that looks nice. If you're not using this, this looks beautiful, right? I think that looks great. It's small. It's incredibly light. It's manual focus. It's F8 fixed. There's no filter thread. There's no lens cap. There's no variable aperture. Bizarrely, there's not even any focus distance marks on it. Yeah. So part of the joy of manually focusing is removed anyway. So I think it was really only kind of developed as a bit of a fun lens, maybe a bit of a toy lens that was never meant to be taken that seriously. But then suddenly, when the 18 to 40 isn't ready on time, it's like, oh, S-H-I-T, I'm now the kit zoom, the kit lens. What am I going to do? And they go, no, don't worry. Don't worry. It's not all on you. We can still use the 20 to 60. But it's so big on the tiny S9 body. And it's like you've got these two lenses that make this body completely inappropriate for this body. And they made people kind of look at it and go, well, I don't, I don't get it. And so there was a lot of hate directed at the body and at the lens. And I think it's a little bit unfairly because there are good things about it. This lens isn't all bad if you take it for what it is. And, and I believe in some regions, you get a voucher when you buy this camera or early adopters of this camera, get it for free. I suspect mm. you'll see some very good deals on it. Would I pay, pay $200 yeah. for it? No way. A hundred, maybe. If it's free, though, or cheaper, not cheaper than free, cheaper than a hundred bucks or something. <laughs> yeah, why not? It's a bit of a laugh, right? It's a bit of fun. But it's not the lens for this camera. Right. Um, so, What I letter felt- grade would you give to your focusing success on that lens? Well, Chris, as you know, I'm an old man who can't focus with his own eyes on things that are closer than about two feet away. So I find cameras which only have screens extremely frustrating to use and that's when they have autofocus when they have manual focus it becomes an impossible task for me which means i hated using this lens on this camera uh so i would give it a minus several million right (laughs) whatever that a z i would give it you know you give it a z minus it was a horrible experience but since coming back i've retested it on an s5 ii using the viewfinder considerably nicer experience because i can actually see what it's doing yeah. and i can focus it but i couldn't focus it on this this camera but that's more about me than the camera that's right. because it's not for me my eyes can't do that you know a younger person 100 agree or younger me would have been just fine with this but agree. it's just so frustrating for them i mean i can feel their their frustration in that mm-hmm. the you know this could have this could have been so different, but equally, I'm not going to give them a, a complete pass for this because simply having an 18 to 40 would not have excused what this 26 could have been. Nikon has a 26 f 2.8, Canon has mm-hmm. a 28 2.8, both full frame mirrorless camera uh, mirrorless yeah. lenses. Um, yes, they're bigger, but they're only seven millimeters bigger. Yes, they're heavier, but only by about 60 grams. Yes, they're yeah. more expensive, but they're only 400 dollars. $400 is still a chunk of change, right? And but they're more useful. Yeah. If this lens had been 2.8 with autofocus and $400, people would have lapped it up and they would have gone, oh my God, yes, it is a bit bigger than an X100 now, but this is a bit heavier, yeah. but it's a viable alternative. Whereas yep. as it is, you look at this lens, it looks great, but manually focusing and having F8 is not viable really for many yeah. people. What am uh, I going to give them? Letter grade? I'd give yeah. them a, I'm going to give them... When I when I came back after a day shoot with this lens, I'd have probably given them a C. But in looking back now and thinking about <laughs> where it fits in and what it should have been, I'm gonna I'm gonna give them a B minus. But I'm hoping for that to be able to go up in the next six months because I, at some point they are gonna have to release a high resolution full frame body. Yes, so serious, I think yeah. there's there's room for that. Hopefully this year, who knows? Yeah. But your G eight seven is great. This camera is great if you understand what it can and can't do. Um, and the 100 mil is serviceable. No, it's better than serviceable. It's fine. It's good. I'm going to go uh, B minus as well. Um, I do it. I'm trying to get outside of myself because the GH7 is, like Gordon said, my 
basically perfect camera. Like I, I don't have a lot of requests on that. And 32 bit float audio is wonderful, but yeah, I, it's just a lack of stuff that I think is going to have mainstream success. And they were so close with that S9. Uh, I was even saying, like, just throw Sigma 45 mils. Give everybody mm. a Sigma 45 mil at that launch. And it would have mm. been a very different response as well. Um, but just some easy, simple oversights on that camera that mm. I found very confusing. Uh, I do think that 100 is a banger, like a small, little, easily floated 100 millimeter uh, with a real lack of chromatic aberration, which is why I love it for doing product photography. It's been a while since I've had a macro that good. Um, but yeah, so for me, A minus, but for general people, I'm going to drop it down to a B minus. I do also want to throw out, they've been consistent with firmware. Uh, we saw a really big upgrade on the S5 II, S5 2X this year. I think Panasonic is right up there um, with Nikon for the best firmware. So uh, that's where I'm sitting. C minus. C minus for sure. It, you know, for especially sure. if we're going off of this year. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, I, I've I've always complained to Panasonic executives about their marketing strategies. I don't personally agree with them. And I, you know, and um, I've been saying for years their cameras could be prettier, they could be, but more importantly, who cares? They could be um, more photo centric and video centric. And I've been saying Panasonic honestly has been ignoring photography and really pushing videography. And of course, that's never going to be a company's outward talking point, right? It's always going to be, oh, they're hybrid and we love both and blah, blah, blah. But it, clearly they don't, I don't think. I feel like they really are video cameras first. I get it. That's their bread and butter. That's where they're very successful. They make great innovative tools. Um, but if we're going by this year, you know, the G9 was supposed to, the G9 Mark II was supposed to be a photographic camera, turned out to be a really good video camera. And and now that the GH7s come out, are people going to go back to a G9 II as a photographic camera? I don't know. The S9, I had fun with it, but it is still kind of like a, a, a very entry-level, simple camera aimed at influencers. It's a small market. Um, and, and we still don't have any new full-frame cameras in the S1 series. And, and that's been a long time coming. So... It's hard not to feel like they're, they're, you know, as much as they want to say, hey, we do everything, they've really kind of let photography go. And that, uh, so that doesn't have as much appeal to me. And the video camera is great. They're fantastic. Awesome cameras, no doubt. But that's, uh, yeah, that's my opinion. Um, so for a full recap of what was announced, the 100 millimeter F2.8, the 28 to 200 F4 to 7 1, yes. <clears throat> yeah. the G100D, actually came to North America. Uh, Jordan yeah. is making a face at me. <laughs> uh, the the S9 and the GH7. Yeah. So like, I oh, and today the FZ80D. I mean, you guys are just, you guys are just looking past all of these amazing <laughs> products from Panasonic. <laughs> I think you're like, yeah. I, if you look at what P Panasonic wants to be doing, they're doing it. And uh, yeah. yeah, maybe it doesn't always land well, but I applaud the attempt. So yeah, that lens that Gordon talked about is terrible and it should have not been that lens. And yeah, you're right. I don't know why. There's, there's a lot of reasons we could speculate as to why that, that kit lens didn't come at the right time. I think Chris and Jordan speculated previously that they thought that this event was actually supposed to be for a different camera. Something happened. They had to move stuff around. That's mm -hmm. why. And the lens just yeah. couldn't join it. So they came up with something that could. Uh, so I'm going to go solid B. Uh, I think I'm I'm happy with what what's wow. out there. Uh, I think there's room for improvement, but yeah, I think solid. I mean, you look at all the look at all the stuff they announced. They bring stuff to market. It's like their lenses. Their lenses are good, but yeah. they're not. They're good for more videography and hybrid platforms than yeah. they are for photography platforms, right? Yeah. And other companies make lenses that are cheaper, smaller, lighter, and optically better in some ways. And so I think it's great that Sigma makes a lot of great lenses for L mount because yeah. Sigma is Sigma is your photographic choice for L mount, so that's great. But Panasonic again, it's not. It's not a problem. I'm not saying that you can't take great photos with them. I'm just saying that's not their emphasis at all. And as much as they say it is it's not yeah. so that's I, i'm not disagreeing with you yeah. but that doesn't change my grade <laughs> yeah you but can you know grade them what? whatever you want do you what? know what that's when great. you do look that's at great. their jpegs out camera they're not bad they're, 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 they're actually great. very nice they're, yeah, they're, they're certainly up there with some of the best uh processing so yeah. they've, they just they've need got... to hire someone internally d design wise who knows what a photographer will want 
and have their input actually listened because you're not going to win many photographers over and any photographer who does buy into the system is like yeah it's great it's perfectly serviceable as gordon said it's perfectly good but you're not going to win a lot of photographers into it right i mean who looks at l mount panasonic and is like oh that's freaking sexy for photography and i desperately want to have one no they're they're looking at nikons they're looking at uh at uh, sony's they're not looking at panasonic in that same way all right we could if panasonic did it we got four left let's talk rico pentax all right there is more than one camera announced from this brand by the way so gordon are you gonna grade this one or abstain abstain i don't do them i'd like to do them but i don't do them i'm interested in that film camera that looks fun yeah let's let's jordan let's talk about it let's talk 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 about about that film camera because of that film camera i'm actually giving them a b plus i think they're figuring out what their market is with that i think it's a real i don't think that's a camera for everybody but the amount of interest in it i mean i'm there was a period there where i was like is the pentax 17 gonna pass the z63 in views which i would never have imagined um I, I think there's a lot of excitement about them for the first time in forever. And this is going to finance more film um, projects coming out of it, which will hopefully make their DSLRs more compelling as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they've made a smart decision being like, no, screw it. We're going to be the Leica of DSLRs. Uh, and I think that's a totally valid move. Some people really enjoy that type of shooting. I'm not one of them, but we see it all the time. It's just like, I prefer using an optical viewfinder and what you see, you know, and having that framing. Uh, so they've latched onto that. I think it's a very, like, it's not a ton of product. It was just that in the waterproof camera, but it's a sign of the direction they're heading that I think is actually going to be very profitable and interesting going forward. I'd still keep it C plus, <clears throat> you know, B minus like I, as, as, they're kind of like Leica where again, they don't really care, right? They're doing their own thing. Now they're going to become niche. That's great. But they need to make money. That's different. Yeah. Well, but I feel like we've been talking about, like we keep saying, Oh, Pentax and and Rico have all this potential, but, but they're not really jumping on it. So the Pentax 17, I think was a super brave move. That's cool. And I, I, I think it's great that they're having success with that. That was a unique fun shooting experience, which is exactly what Pentax and Rico need to be doing. Right. The GR3, they're great cameras, but they're not innovating in any way. But they're still impossible to get. People love them. That's great. That's awesome. So kudos to them. But like the SLRs, we haven't seen any innovation. If if you want to become this niche camera company that's going to be the last maker of the SLR, make some SLRs. Like make some <laughs> new SLRs. Fair. Like, that's fair. You know what I mean? Because we're we're talking about you guys are saying it's 2024, not not the not the years before. So really, if we're going to go by that, they're not an SLR manufacturer, really, right? So uh, you know, let's see new products. Let's see some interesting SLRs. They could make beautiful vintage SLRs. They could, you know, make film SLRs. I think that's the the step to go for. And I get they don't have a lot of research and they don't have a lot of money uh, compared to some of the other budgets that maybe other companies have. But that's the direction to go. I, I think they've got a lot of work to do. They should just resell the ME Super. Just mm. start making that again. I've they heard totally that. could. Yeah, and the digital versions of those and stuff. You know, I, Nikon ZFC. I don't think it did very well. You know, we talk about the camera store being our friends. We you know we kind of get information of like how are the sales doing. I don't think it did very well, and it's gorgeous, right? But uh, maybe Pentax could do a better job there. Mm-hmm. Maybe they could do a, a more interesting job or work job. I don't know. Um, full frame vintage SLR. That'd be cool. Uh, to Anyways, be fair to Pentax, they're right not doing now. it. Uh, they did have more than two products, so they, they had the HDF. I'm going to yeah. technically count that as a new product. Uh, Pentax had the PF85 EDA. It was a spotting scope for bird watching. I don't really know if that counts, but no, you know, we're, we're not happen. including Canon photocopiers. In there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a lens in it. You can't. You, you tried to get Nikon right, making fine, telescopes fine. in there. Come on. Technically, there were two waterproof cameras: the mm, yeah. WG1000 and the WG8. One's entry level. One is higher end pro. And everybody's heard of those, right? No. Uh, and then the Pentax 17. So it's yeah. just a handful of products, but I agree with Chris that it's odd we're not seeing a new DSLR from them and haven't for a while now. We got the monochrome yeah. last year. Did we get a real new DSLR even last year? No. And yeah, let's be been... fair that the new DSLRs they make are basically the old DSLRs yeah. with slight. Oh, they changes. did have one where it was the same camera, but a different serial number because they had to change some parts out. That doesn't right. count. Yes. That does not count as a new product. So 
I want Rico Pentax to do more. I'm, I think the Pentax 17 is dragging my score up because this is such a, a, a this was an interesting move, cost them a lot of money. They still manage to, to price it in a way that makes sense, despite the amount of effort they had to go through to make it. Uh, yeah. I'm going to give them a C and I hope to see a little bit more. I'd like to see a DSLR this year. Give me a DSLR this year, and I will give you an A Pentax. When we that's come to not December. just a like K one correct, four. an actual yeah. new DSLR. If you bring me one in twenty twenty four, I will give you an A at the end of the year. That's all you have to do. <laughs> Low bar. <laughs> all right, uh, we're gonna get three more in here. Sigma, Gordon, how'd Sigma do so far? What's their midterm grade? Strong, brain? strong. I count six new lenses from them. I think of which I reviewed five. Uh, the one I tested but didn't actually get around to making a video about was a uh, fisheye 15 1.4 yeah. i think i reviewed everything I mean, which performed fine i just did i just other things got in the way they did a great 24 to 72.8 really mm -hmm. good quality um they did a really innovative 28 to 45 1.8 which i have tested and made a video about but i'm holding that one back for a couple of weeks i want to just see what that happens to release it a bit later than when it came out but that one is coming from me and that, that's tremendous short zoom range but f1.8 full frame zoom uh a re it's a really solid 51.2 a 505.6 that's small finally that a nice rules. compact chris loves telephoto that lens yeah. prime lens it's what everyone wants or what i want i think that's great mm -hmm. Um, and and the icing on the cake, finally, the 1852.8 available in the Canon RF Man. And I did a posted a video on that when they kind of reannounced that a few days ago. And it absolutely transforms cameras like the EOS R7. I mean, it doesn't yeah. have optical image stabilization, which is a bit of a downside because the only Canon APS-C body with IBIS is the R7. Everything else doesn't have it. So it's nicest of all on the R7. I'd say it's a no-brainer on the R7. If you've got it, just go out and buy that lens straight away. And for the other ones, also buy it and just take care and be steadier <laughs> when you take your pictures. It's just really nice. It works yeah. really well. And it's not that expensive. And in the UK, it's actually quite... It, we, we're often seeing the numbers uh, being the same in pounds as they are in dollar in US dollars. But for Sigma on this one, I think it's 600 US, but 470 pounds, which is an even better deal for UK people, which is unusual. Um, it's great. I love it. So I think, I think an A, surely. Yeah, an A for me, for Sigma. Well done. What a strong six months. Five lenses in six months, and they're all really good. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go an A-. Uh, everything Gordon said is great. I think they're just killing it with lenses this year. I was saying, like, are we just going to have to do, like, all Sigmas for Lens of the Year this year? Like, just a rundown of them, and it's just what order we put them in? They're killing it. I do think they need to just make a statement like, look, we're killing the camera project or they need to release a camera. That's the only reason I'm putting them down to an A minus. I would really like to see, um, you know, even some developments on that Foveon or just say Foveon's impractical. We're going to well, make they like a small, give, cool camera. Yeah. They did give an update on it. It's years it's gonna, away. Years away. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that is the one thing I'm going to ding them for very slightly. Um, just make something with a Bayer pattern, guys. Or just say, we're not making cameras anymore and throw that at me, continuing to make no, like, the best lenses. No, I know, because his father, father will haunt will him. Haunt yes. him. I, we've yes. been through this before on the podcast, but and it's it's still a very valid argument. I just feel it's... it's um, they have a sorry. whole floor in their building dedicated to making cameras, in addition to the floor dedicated to lenses. His dad is not going to haunt him now. Okay. Chris? Uh, I would give him an A. I, I, I really, because I kind of consider Sigma's camera division like a, a oddity at best. You know what I mean? Like It's, it's for warding it's, off spirits. So yes. Yeah, it's for warding That's off spirits. I don't, <laughs> I don't consider, I'd like, I just don't even factor them in. And it would take a lot for them to make a camera product that would really fascinate me, you know, beyond like why, why and how would anybody make this camera? Um, to hurt your yeah, hands. I've never... I've never liked their products and and like their camera products, but obviously lens manufacturing it's just incredible what they've done. Um, you can't say enough good things about them. They're you know not only are they now a premium lens manufacturer that nobody can dispute. Like you know they're not a budget brand anymore, but they still make good budget lenses. They make lots of interesting options for many different uh, brands. 
you know, different price ranges, different sensor sizes. I, I you know, if anything, they're they're just going to keep expanding that. So I, I don't know. Do you think Fujifilm would ever let them into the the medium format mounts? I, uh, I Kazuto-san says he wants to. I actually have that I as know. a story I wrote earlier this year. He wants. If to I was that. Fujifilm and I was being really cagey and conservative, I'd be like, hell no, um, because I think they'll yeah they'll kill it. But you know, I think other camera companies, it's you almost have to accept Sigma as a brand and be like we're better off to let them in than to fight it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I agree with the grade. I'm going to go with a solid a, yeah. uh, I can't expect more from a brand than this. They've, no. they've cemented their place as a premier lens manufacturer. Um, if you don't accept Sigma lenses on your mount, you look silly. Um, Canon and Nikon both really should be what's going on there. I mean, Nikon specifically with Sigma is super strange because you can get autofocus lenses from the weird brands like off knockoff brands in China or whatever, but you can't get a Sigma lens. That tells me it's a Nikon situation that yeah, they're telling yeah. Sigma no right now. Uh, for it could whatever be the reason. partnership with Tamron. I believe that's what it is. Yeah. Tamron and Sigma. Mm. Uh, there's like there's a, a blood feud there that they they <laughs> they did don't like each other. They don't even say the other one exists. They never admit that they are there. But you know, at, at yeah. some point that has to expire. And if if Tamron demands it again, Nikon should decline and just let Sigma release lenses for their mount. They'll sell more cameras. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's what Nikon's goal is: sell cameras. If you can sell cameras by by having great lenses from Sigma available. Great. So yeah, a can't hold Sigma accountable for any of the things that I would complain about. It's the only thing I complain about is you can't get it on more bodies and that's not up to Sigma. So yeah. uh, great job. Keep it. Keep at it. They never seem to be resting on their laurels either. They are constantly mm-hmm. releasing something fabulous. Uh, yeah. And it's th- that's thumbs what, up. That's what fear of the dead will do for you. It, that's right. It's a strong that's right. motivator. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right. Last two. Sony. This is kind of quick, actually. What is yeah, I, I looked. I looked back at the reviews that I've published in 2024, and none were yeah. from Sony. Silent. This is for a couple of reasons. First, is that um, there, there have been a couple of lenses, at least yeah. one, 24 to 50. I think there was another. Yeah, the one. wide angle was also this year. The, yeah, um, 16 to 25. Both coincided with um, when I was away, uh, so I, I, co- I couldn't do them. Um, so I didn't review either of them. Um, the other one that. I think you're counting this year is the a93 we all kind of saw it last year but mm-hmm. it didn't actually come out until this Correct. year so we'll give them that mm-hmm. i mean and it's obviously a niche camera yeah i mean obviously technologically innovative and very impressive but will you know only appeal to a very limited number of people but you know they are amazing at their sensors and it does amazing stuff not for everyone obviously um but based on what they've really, do I have to count the A nine three for this? You do year? have to give it to them, yeah. <laughs> that review came out in 20, January twenty seventh, so that was, I think, the for us anyway. Uh, I think the review embargo was there was a review in, embargo on that, so yeah, it was a uh, twenty twenty four. So we can go ahead and count that that and the twenty four to fifty, and the sixteen to twenty five. I think I'm gonna have to go. It's either going to be B minus or C plus because there's there's not a lot, and what there is is sort of quite specific. I think there'll be interesting things going forward. Some more mainstream things. Personally, I'm really interested to see if there's still room for an A7S uh, in the series. You know, is that going to go forward? Or is that going to merge? Jordan with something doesn't think else? so. I actually asked him that like last week, and he's like, no, I, don't I don't think they're going to make one. Um, yeah. But then you know, maybe they will. Or maybe there's some other things going on. Um, yeah. As, but no yeah, I think I'm going to have to go see plus based on the yeah. first six months, even though obviously the A9 III is a big deal. Tremendous. It's, bit it's, it's driven technology. entirely by that, I feel like, for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's it. C, C plus for me. Okay, I'm going to go B minus. I do think the A9 III, like you said, it's not a camera many people are going to buy. And I think actually more video shooters are picking it up than mm-hmm. photographers because uh, it's actually really compelling for that. But it is a huge statement of Sony just saying like, look, we're technologically years ahead of everybody. And they just keep proving it over and over and over. Um, so that is definitely a testament to that. Yeah. I think it's going to be years before we see something similar from another manufacturer. Uh, and those two lenses are, you know, they're, they're fine. Like they're, 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 they make a lot of sense for video shooters. Um, I really like the idea Boring. of having two balanced gimbal uh, lenses designed for gimbals. It's what makes Panasonic's little um, primes 
so impressive is having that option. But no, they're not going to make a huge dent. I think it's just A93 re- establishes that they're killing it technology wise. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you guys. I mean, the the A93, I, I don't know. The A93 doesn't really excite anybody. I mean, how many times have you guys thought about the A93 in the last, you know, since you played with it? Uh, um, twice. You know, not, every time I'm shooting video out of the window of a moving car, I think about the A9 fondly, oh, but that's not that. Yeah, often. that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> You know, so yeah, if if we're going by 2024, obviously, because that's your guys' rule, it doesn't get a high mark, you know. But I will say this: that's how grades work. What's uh, <laughs> what's amazing about Sony, um, and we were kind of talking about this, Jordan and I, just recently. You know, all these new cameras you have, the Z6s, you've got Z8s, you've got Z9s, and you're like Sony. They haven't released anything in a long time. Certainly, bodies, right? Other than the A93, and that was a very specialized product. But at the same time, you got to look at it like. Do you need to? I, camera companies are coming out with all these new cameras that we're really lauding today. And yet, you can look at the Sony bodies and be like, well, they've had something that would compete with that for years in some cases. And so, yeah, maybe they are resting on their laurels, but like, if any company can, it is them. The A1 is so old by digital standards, and yet it is still a very compelling product <clears throat> today against modern cameras being released with all their fanciest technology. You know what I mean? And they've had it for such a long time. Um, and the a7 fours are solid, you know, a7 C's, a7 CRs, maybe they're not, they're not getting that kind of, uh, that kind of appeal that they were hoping for on those bodies, but they're well liked. So yeah, I think, I think it's amazing that all the companies today are still playing catch up. We always say Nikon and Canon uh, autofocus is really good nowadays because they finally reached what Sony has had with real-time tracking for years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. They did release uh, just recently their phone, not phone. Oh, that's, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you can't give... That, that's a detractor, though. Their phones kind of suck the market. No, the phone, not phone. The phone, not phone. What's it's the phone, not a not phone. phone. It just looks like a phone and does what a phone does, but it's not a phone. Did what? they say that? They didn't launch it in the U.S. or in Canada. Oh, the, one, the, the specific camera smartphone yeah. no the, the the thing that you use to kind of upload images oh, very quickly in a mobile system. environment yeah. so it's a kind of oh. phone that's not a phone but it's optimized for like cellular transfer. The 5g transmitter exactly right the 5G yeah transmitter. that's true you're right see i thought How i had a 5g transmitter here but apparently it's not they also did an xperia <laughs> only in europe uh that's what i thought you were yeah. talking about they no. they pulled out of the phone market entirely in the in north yeah, america yeah this is a phone not phone got it the sorry phone, i did not phone want to jump on one other thing I have in my notes here is that massive firmware update um, on a whole bunch of bodies, which Sony has historically been very stingy with firmware updates. That was a real change of tenor from which is also part of that B minus score there. Sorry. Uh, I'm I'm going to go solid B uh, by these standards, but I'm going to go D minus on Sony's standards. Sony, if they were to grade themselves, if you force them to, would probably not be super stoked on what they've done this year because they haven't done that much. By Sony standards, it's very little. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But as Chris points out, most of the audience for Sony cameras is perfectly pleased right now. Um, yeah. And so they don't, they're don't they not clamoring for much. The, the firmware updates are great. The couple of lenses are nice. The A93 is a fabulous camera. Uh, so... Yeah, I'm I'm happy to give them a, a solid B. I know that they probably want to do more, uh, but you know, I'll, I think they're doing. I fine. do feel like the time is ripe though for them to, you know, you, you always think about Sony as this company where they'll come out with something and just like atom bomb the industry, right? And everybody's like, oh my god. So you know, that's kind of where I'm like, I hope I, I don't hope I don't care I don't, I don't own Sony, but it's like <clears throat> I'm excited to see this year. Are they going to come up with something huge? How innovative is it going to be? Is Sony still going to keep that two-year gap over everybody? Or are they going to release a camera and we're going to kind of be like, oh, that's like a minor Yeah, update. what was we're it that to be felt like it was a really iterative update? It was either the, the A7R 3 or A7R 4 I felt was iterative. Uh, yeah. I mean, the A7R 3 was was a big jump. The A7R okay, 5 so is a really capable camera. Like, I think it may have been the 4 where I was like, this is a great camera, but it does, it's not blowing me away camera. is what I thought. Yeah. So. 
Yeah. Uh, all right. So we'll so see. We're running out of time. A one so. two. A one two. That would be wild. They need a new flag. They, that would be neat. Uh, last one we're going to do is Tamron. They didn't have a ton this year, so this should oh. be quick. Gordon, do you have anything to say? I'm going to be even quicker because um, my uh, guy in Germany reviews those for my website, so I don't actually do any tests on them myself. So I've not personally had any experience, so I'm going to abstain from this one. Yeah, they. they I mean, I'm looking at our in just in 2024. We have only written about Tamron in the title of a story five times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's been quite a bit of consumer stuff coming out from them lately, which is interesting because they were really doing like some interesting super tellies. Obviously, I've been gushing about the thirty-five to one fifty for years now. I adore that lens, um, but yeah, just nothing that's been coming through has been terribly exciting. Um, and then you know they've got the generation two; they're adding faster focus motors to a lot of their lenses but just not in the same way uh, as what we're seeing from Sigma right now, um, where it's just like completely new developments yeah. that like are drastically outperform the previous versions. Uh, the Tamrons are, you know, a nice to have upgrade on in a lot of ways, but um, like that new 50 to 300, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to go C minus on Tamron this year. Yeah. The 50 to 300 at four, five to six, three is one. Yeah. Yeah. Two we haven't played with that yet though yeah. ourselves. Yeah, C minus. I mean, you know, and, and obviously they're going to draw comparisons to Sigma, in which case it's really sad, right? Like when you look at the two companies, because Tamron would love to be that way. For a few years, they were very much, well, for decades, they were on par, right? Fighting. And then even a few years ago, we were reviewing a lot of their lenses for SLRs, reviewing their lenses for mirrorless. Their 1.8 primes and stuff were really cool. And now it's been a long time since that, like a long time. So, and then Sigma's doing all of this stuff, and Tamron's clearly not able to really keep up. They do make some very interesting focal lengths that other people don't touch, and that's cool, and that's great. Um, and, and they tend to be really good. And the new, the new G two version uh, of their uh, twenty eight seventy five is a nice lens, absolutely. So you know they can make good lenses, but yeah, they they're just not keeping up with Sigma, and that looks really bad when you have that kind of competitor to face yeah. against. Tamron used to be like if you wanted a third party zoom tamron if you wanted mm -hmm. a third party prime sigma but sigma has closed the gap on the zooms so yeah. you really only go for tamron if you want a very specific yeah. zoom which they make some great ones yeah uh this year the 20 to 75 f 2.8 g2 uh is, came to nikon z mount uh then they had the 50 to 300 f 45 to 6.3 and then they said that they were going to launch the 11 to 20 f 2.8 for rf so not a lot new yeah, the only uh, new one is the telly. Yeah, and so mm, yeah, 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 mm. yeah. C, yeah. C minus, D, D plus. Uh, yeah. I think we'll see more from them this year. I'm not, I'm not counting them out again. They, they, they can change their grade by coming out with like three, three or four solid lenses. Um, we chatted recently, and you brought it up quickly, Chris. Uh, just read, bring us those primes back. Like, yeah. bring yeah, us primes. the primes that were really good for DSLRs. And then it seems they like need they just to make some stopped. like they need to make some premium primo fast lenses that showcase what they can do as an optical manufacturer. That, like I they, remember loving the 35 from them. They got, a, it got our lens of the year. They got that, a it's a really yeah. nice lens. And I was like, God, yeah. geez, that's what, but that, was I a long, that was many years ago. Yeah, I was. I remember the launch. Wow. It was in New York. Yeah. It was in Chelsea. I was, I was just like, I mean, no, Sigma is really smart with their art series versus their contemporary series and and really kind of bring the prestige to that in their marketing. So yeah. Tamron's got to do some stuff. I think what no one's doing, and there's an opportunity for this, is really, really small lenses mm -hmm. that are okay. You know, <laughs> like Fujifilm really needs to revamp its pancake lenses and make more of them. We have already talked how Panasonic uh, needs to do that, although Sigma could do it for them. Sigma's lenses are great, but they're all quite large. You know, maybe that's an opportunity for Tamron or for one of the other lens manufacturers. Mm -hmm. They're thinking, what can we do next? I'd really like to see some very, very small lenses. I feel that cameras and lenses are all yeah. too big these yeah. days, which is fine when you want a big camera, but sometimes you want a little camera and the little camera needs a little lens. So, uh, Tamron's it, great at making light lenses, but they still tend to be physically mm -hmm. bulky. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. I'm going to I'm gonna call it there. We have two things left before we end the show. One of them... I'm going to I'm going to leave the end of the show to Gordon. So the uh, one thing that I want to do for you, uh, Jordan, we're going to skip tech support and never read the comments this week, except for one comment. And this one is for Jordan. Uh, we are aware that the Nikon Plena is not two dollars. Uh, so great. Jordan, this is how I wanted to wrap it up. Um, <laughs> 
I uh, I edited that video on an airplane on my way back home, and then I got home and I finished a, finished that video because it was getting uh, published the weekend. And I went on a camping trip with Chris, and uh, there's some uh, some typos, and some of the images aren't exactly the images that you know you might be looking at a lens, and maybe the lens that's on screen isn't exactly that <laughs> lens. You know, some things like that happen. Uh, you know, I'm you. taking I'm taking full no no no, no Jaron no Jaron this is I'm. I'm pounding the nails in okay. on myself right now. Uh, apologies, everyone. Um, I will make sure that things are a little bit more consistent in all of our episodes going forward. Just... I was tired, damn it. You were, but you're you're often tired uh, for good reason. Like, <laughs> like that's not an excuse. Yeah. No, there's there's a lot of typos, but you know what? I fe- I feel like you should just own it because our viewers always notice the typos, and 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 sometimes we miss them. I mean, we look at the roughs, we sometimes miss them too. So. It's like I, I think you should just own it. It should be like hidden Easter eggs. Like I'm I put, so I put we... two typos in every episode. Find and it. Whoever can find it gets gold stars. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad we found time to include this. Oh, it was important. <laughs> it was important to me. I, I, I also wanted to right. take some blame, but you wouldn't let Gordon, me. Gordon, so uh, do you have any it. opinions on how disappointed you are with me this week? <laughs> it, it's grown. It's, it's substantially greater than it was before. <laughs> Uh, Gordon, what I'd like to end the show on is whenever we have a guest, I want to give them a chance to hype something that they're doing, get people excited to go check out their work. Uh, we love Camera Labs and we love Gordon. So, Gordon, tell us, what should people do if they want to support Gordon? Well, if you want to see more Gordon instead of just all the usual brand new gear reviews, do check out my uh, vintage retro channel, which is called Dinobytes. You can tell by the way that I present it or even the way that I'm talking now, I get very excited about these old cameras. Now, they're not like old film cameras, they're old digital cameras. So it's a period of like the mid 90s to the mid noughties, mid 2000s. And they're just really interesting. It was a time when people didn't know what a digital camera should look like. It could look like anything. They all ended up looking the same at the end of the story. But for a period, they were mad, really crazy designs, everything twisted or flipped out. So I try and do at least one video a month. And because recently I've uh, missed out a couple of new gear reviews, I've had a chance to do many more of those videos on Dynavice. So check those out. And uh, because I do quite a lot of travel, I've now got a travel tips channel called Gordon's Travel Tips. So check that out if you're interested in seeing... um, what a Japanese hotel room looks like or what the inside I, I learned one how of to the Egyptian ski. pyramids is. Yes. Yeah. I've even got some snowboarding videos yeah. in uh, Japan, um, British, uh, sorry, um, Quebec City yep. and Vermont. Uh, so oh, check nice. those out. Very nice. Thank you very much. Very cool. All right. And thanks for having me on, back. guys. Thank, oh, of I, course. I'd really love to have it. you. Yeah. I, we're going to have you at least, if you'd like, at least one more time, if not two more times this year, because now that you're a part of the grading, I think we should have you back for the end of <laughs> your grading. There's got to be some consistency, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, then we also absolutely. loved having you for bold predictions. You were fantastic in bold predictions. We might bring you back Thank for that, you. too. If, if you're open to it, I'm not saying might. I don't want to force you to join. Mandatory Gordon appearances. Yeah. I would love to do it, and I promise I will get my camera uh, working properly this time for the uh, presentation. I'm sorry, oh, I've been on a webcam today so i apologize if it doesn't look great i've had a couple of technical issues thanks everyone for joining us thanks to our sponsors om system and bay photo we really appreciate you again make sure to take advantage of those deals both of them have some going on right now uh yeah thanks very much everyone we'll see you next week bye bye bye